Hi, my name is George Page and I am studying Business and Management at Leeds Beckett University. In the next 10 minutes, I am going to be telling you what my interpretation of marketing myths are and what I have learned over the past couple of weeks in Foundation for Marketing and what marketing organisations and orientations are. Hope you enjoy. So, what is marketing? Marketing is all about customers and being the heart of the business. This is what I've been learning from the customer centric marketing book by Richardson, James and Kelly. From my interpretation, marketing can also be about advertising and a lot about research. You have to know what the customer wants by researching. There are many marketing myths. One of the big ones are a satisfied customer is a loyal customer. My interpretation of this myth is that customers change their minds all the time. So they may be satisfied, but not always loyal. There can be better deals on in a different shop that has better value for their money. Therefore, they are not always being loyal. Another one of my reasons are that the customer is new to this business and could just be trying different ones to see which one is better. I also know from my own interpretation that trends are always changing and I am always looking for a new style. And just because I love Topshop and that I am a very satisfied customer, I might find that there's a new trend that has just came out and it's in River Island. I decide to buy it from there, then I'm not always being a loyal customer. But this doesn't always mean being loyal or not being loyal. It tends to generally mean word of mouth, which could result in using word of mouth to other people. And by using this, it could send other customers to other shops and businesses. By being able to keep your loyal customers, you always need to focus on what the customers want. Another marketing myth, from my interpretation, I would like to talk about is a strong brand is invincible. What I learned from this myth was that even if you have the, one of the biggest brands worldwide, you can still make mistakes. For example, as the Robert Milton Taylor said in the Lee's business blog, to be one of the big, biggest self-inflicted corporate scandals of the 21st century, and it happened to be Volkswagen, which have been one of the biggest car brands for 40 years. After such a big scandal, Volkswagens are going to struggle coming back from this, which explains how this myth is not always true. By reading the Leeds Business Week blog by Robert Milton Taylor clearly shows that they are going to be losing many customers. A big name brand can sustain a higher price. This myth is one of my favourites because I think it's true. The reasons for this is because if everyone follows a big name brand and it becomes a trend, then why not make it more pricey? If everyone is going to buy the item or brand, then why not? An example would be Apple, of course. I would use this as an example because nearly everyone purchases an iPhone or an iPad because everyone wants them and everyone has them. Even if there are many problems with Apple products, which they are, no one will change to a different phone because it is such a massive trend. Or you can get the different kinds of people who prefer on Androids. Even though the, that people follow trends, it doesn't always mean it is okay to sustain a higher price. If the quality of the product was expensive to make, then there is a reason to sustain at such an expensive price. If I went to Harvey Nichols and paid for something really expensive, I want to be getting exactly what I have paid for, not th something that is well overpriced. But from the story of Glasses Direct by Rachel Bridge from the Sunday Times, it shows that you don't always need a sustainable price because it just shows that more people are willing to go back to the company because they are getting more for their money. And Glasses Direct is definitely a big brand by bringing a big result of £3 million of sales. And this is why James Murray Wells is such a young entrepreneur because he has researched and listened to what the customers want. I find this story really interesting because he has achieved this at such a young age and proved at, and listened at what people really do want and speaking from my perspective I am always looking for a better deal on glasses. Advertising always affects sales. This myth from my interpretation affects sales because by advertising the wrong thing could lead you to lose sales. But advertising, advertising doesn't always mean you are going to lose sales. You need to be able to advertise your product to get the sales in the first place. It's knowing how to ad advertise is to say whether it's going to boost your sales or not. By doing this, it can also create a short-term demand. 
backing this up would be trying to sell a perfume or aftershave and putting a celebrity on the advertisement is going to make sales go up because customers are going to look at this advertisement maybe because one of their favourite celebrities is on the advertisement which could lead customers wanting to buy it but that's just my view. Customer is king or queen is also another popular myth in marketing. Customers king or queen is the heart of every business, whether they are king or queen. Other companies have a lot of money, so it doesn't really matter if the product does well or not. Also, their goal is to make, always make lots more profit. There doesn't always have to be a king or queen, queen in general. It just means that you have to be able to sell to both king and queen and put them both into consideration. Sales orientation is about having more interest in the sales, more than the product. An example would be Aldi, because they sell their own brand in their stores, and they produce what they want to sell. But this could also be what the customer wants, because they are selling their own brand, but for a cheaper price. A better example would be Apple, because they produce products they want to sell. They are always coming up with new ideas, but when something goes wrong, they never change it. For example, when Apple fetched a new charger in with the new iPhone, they had more problems with it because they were always breaking, which resulted in people having to buy new char chargers all the time. Apple obviously didn't want to change this because they were making money out of customers. Instead, they decided to put a year warranty on the charger, so if it breaks, you can go and get a new one in that year. From what I've learned in these past couple of weeks, marketing or orientation was an important point made in the lecture. Quote from the customer centric marketing book, Richardson, James and Kelly, they say that marketing orientation is all about focusing on the current and future customers and understanding them. Obviously, the current and future customers are always going to be important, which means marketing orientation must mean for a company that is always important to research into. Marketing because it is important to find the value and import importance for customers. By doing this, they are able to have well and long-lasting relationships with customers and make, making sure they are valued. By having orientation, you are more likely to increase in more loyal and satisfied customers, but not just by having loyal customers. You are likely to attract new ones. To be able to have a marketing concept, you should have all staff on board to be supporting the, deci the decision. <laughs> In these first couple of weeks in Foundation for Marketing, I have learned it isn't something you just can't you can just learn. It takes so much more dedication dedication and research to be able to understand. And from what I've researched, I've found out that there isn't a right or wrong answer when it comes to understanding marketing in the real world or even for this module. Throughout my experience, it has opened eyes more because when I picked business and management I didn't really know what to expect. Marketing has made my future a lot more clearly in what I want to do after I finish the, this degree at Leeds Business School. Thanks for listening to my own views on marketing and different types of myths and what I've learned about marketing in this 10 minute vlog for Foundation for Marketing and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.